can't hardly believe it. Um, we, we were here one year ago at last year's Chamber um, AGM, where I discussed my recently established Invest in North Delta Committee, a committee established to encourage economic development and social revitalization along the Scott Road corridor of North Delta. I'm pleased to report that since the committee's inception, we successfully received, processed, and approved a development application for a 37-story high-rise apartment at 80th Avenue and Scott Road in North Delta within the span of three months. I want to add that this development includes four stories of commercial space. The processing time frame for an application of this size is a new record for Delta and one that we strive to continue to achieve efficiency wherever and whenever possible. Since the approval of the 80th Avenue high rise, we have uh, seen an increase in development interest in this area, including a feature article in the Business in Vancouver publication and inquiries from developers and real estate agents across this lower mainland. I'm proud to say we are moving in the right direction on Scott Road. One of the key components that the Invest in North Delta Committee and I developed to help create our goal of revitalization was financial incentives. The incentives apply to applications that meet certain criteria and include a municipal property tax freeze, reduced development cost charges, and a waiver of municipal building fees. With these incentives, High density residential developments, such as the 80th Avenue project, will help to create a strong local economy, expand employment opportunities, and hopefully lead to improved transit services. You may recall that in 2011, Delta implemented similar financial incentives to encourage the closure and the redevelopment of demolition waste landfill sites along River Road East in the corridor of the Tilbury Industrial Area. One of the most notorious landfills was the Delta Shake and Shingle property, which uh, had been in a state of disrepair since the fire in 1999 that resulted in a local state of emergency. With contaminated ditch and groundwater, threats to several major gas pipelines and a toxic plume of smoke dispersed over the region, it took several months and four million dollars of provincial funds to extinguish that fire. Delta became the owner of a, of a large part of the site through tax default. And since that time, we tried to sell the safe shake and shingle property with little success. Given the consideration and considerable remediation works, investment in environmental liabilities associated with that property. Knowing something had to be done, we spearheaded what is known as the saving our industrial lands. This was an, initi an initiative to facilitate the eco-friendly development of these landfill sites, including Delta, Shape, and Shingle. Implementing a municipal property tax exemption, fee waivers, and streamlined approval processes as financial incentives, Delta was able to reach a landmark agreement in 2011, and Ocean Trailers, a Coquitlam-based trailer and container business for the purchase, remediation, and redevelopment of the shake and shingle site. As you can see, and, and I hope you have a chance to look at those uh, boards that the staff have brought here today, uh, you can see the photograph over here on the board <coughs> of where Ocean Trailers' new business headquarters are under construction and looking great. The site went from 20 <coughs> acres of derelict, contaminated land to a soon-to-be-operating, eco-friendly facility 
that will bring 150 new jobs to the area, all the while helping to increase the value of surrounding industrial areas and lands. This has truly been a win-win situation for all parties, and you have my assurance that we will continue to work with property owners in the area to stimulate further development. I must acknowledge the ongoing concern that we have heard from employers and employees in the Tilbury area. The traffic congestion and choke points along River Road are really unacceptable and quite outrageous. This construction, with construction of the South Fraser Perimeter Road, however, wrapping up at the end of the year, we are anticipating improvements in vehicle volume and traffic flows. River Road will no longer be the route through, for, through travel, but a destination location for new and existing businesses and their employees. For the many employees who use transit in Tilbury, I'm pleased to announce that Delta is constructing six new bus shelters along River Road this year, improving our bus stops to serve businesses in our industrial area has been a priority of ours, and we are able to accomplish this important work through Delta's Neighborhood Road Improvement Plan. This is an initiative introduced last year to improve access around our community for vehicles, transits, pedestrians, and cyclists. Making our streets and communities safer, <coughs> greener, and more livable is key for this council. And as this program moves into its second year, many more neighborhood upgrades will also be taking place. One of the poster boards, again, mounted here today, lists the projects slated for construction under this plan. One notable project from this plan that is now underway is the Ladner Trunk Road and Arthur Drive intersection. Improvements to this intersection will not only facilitate better traffic flow in and out of the Ladner village, but will also provide decorative components, offering a welcoming facelift to the major entrance of our treasured village. Transportation upgrades don't end there. Over the past year, Delta has lobbied for funding partnerships with the federal and provincial governments for improvements to our waterways and provincial highways. And I am pleased to say these efforts have been successful. One such partnership provides for $7 million worth of improvements to Highway 99, including upgrades to the Matthews Interchange and a new off-ramp at 80th Street. Construction will start soon and is expected to be completed by the spring of 2014. The new Highway 99 off-ramp at 80th Street will complement the 900,000 square foot day U com commercial distribution center that is under development at the Boundary Bay Airport. That's happening as we speak. This commercial area is being built on industrially, industrially zoned land adjacent to the airport and is expected to bring 1,000 new jobs to Delta. <coughs> Another long-standing transportation issue now being addressed is the dredging of Ladner Harbor. Thanks to Delta's e efforts in the partnership with the Ladner Sediment Group, we secured the funding necessary to dredge vital channels in Ladner Harbor and Steveston. I'm pleased to uh, collaborate with Fort Mester Vancouver, the City of Richmond, with our uh, federal member of parliament, Carrie Lynn Finley, who did a tremendous amount of work on this file, along with the Minister of Highways from the provincial government, Mary Polak. Yes, I almost forgot her name there for a moment. Um, this was a $10 million joint commitment by these levels of governments, and staff is currently working with Port Metro Vancouver, the province, to develop the dredging schedule. Work will begin this summer, 
and we will continue to update you as this project progresses. In terms of municipal only infrastructure projects in progress, the new Delta Community Animal Shelter located in Tilbury is nearing completion and will be operational this April. We will be holding a grand opening, a celebration in June, so stay tuned for details. It is going to be a feat for this community. Another notable project that I am proud to highlight is the joint effort undertaken by staff and members of the Heritage Advisory Commission and the Kirkland House Foundation last year to relocate and preserve the Harris Barn. The barn had been scheduled for demolition, but while the support of the members of the community and the Delta Council, the Harris Barn will now serve as a new community venue capable of holding up to 400 people, retaining several original pieces of its composition in recognition and celebration of Delta's agricultural history. The barn is scheduled to, for completion in May and is booked solid for the next year, if you can believe that. We will also see its completion with a grand opening on Saturday, May the 25th. And once again, I have to thank um, um, our MP, Carolyn Finley, for the $250,000 that she brought us from the federal government. Moving to the north, plans are getting underway for a 25,000 square foot expansion to the North Delta Recreation Center. The expansion includes two key elements, a multi-purpose gymnasium that will facilitate sports, recreation, performances, community events, and large gatherings, and a North Delta Civic Business Office. The expansion will provide residents with increased access to a broader range of municipal services, including bylaw enforcement, taxation, community planning, and recreational programs. Given the population in North Delta and the number of recreational user groups, the need for access to increased civic services and recreation is evident. In other recreational news, I am sure you have all heard about this year's Tour de Delta White Spot Road Race achieving Union Cyclist International. That's a sanctioning that is the only road cycling race in British Columbia to achieve this important international status. The international <coughs> sanctioning is expected to draw a large number of high caliber teams and cyclists from around the world. In fact, I've been informed that we already have four teams from the United States, two teams from Germany, and one team from Canada who have already signed up. This event will generate great media coverage, <coughs> raising the profile of our great municipality. Now I must point out that none of these many projects could be possible without strong fiscal and capital planning and healthy financial reserves. To this end, I must acknowledge the leadership of our Chief Administrative Officer, Mr. George Harvey, along with our other great team members, our other directors, and all the people that work at Municipal Hall. The senior management is second to none, in my opinion. Uh, they have not only coordinated the financial resources to accomplish the many projects highlighted today, and more, but who have also worked with me and this council to make significant inroads towards eliminating our municipal debt. And in fact, and you may recall we talked about this as well last year, our general debt in Delta will be down to $2.6 million by the end of this year. A significant drop from the $44.7 million which I inherited in 1999. With our continued commitment to pay-as-you-go project funding in just a few more years, the general debt will be entirely eliminated. 
This year's property tax rate is one of the lowest in the region and demonstrates the financial leadership of this council. The 2013 tax increase of 1.9% includes 0.9% allocated to maintain general municipal services and 1% for the Neighborhood Road Improvement Plan. So as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, we have been busy addressing several issues and initiating projects related to transportation infrastructure, community amenities, economic development in our community. As Mayor of Delta, I am proud of the work that we have accomplished and we are not done yet. Delta faces many challenges, some of which are beyond municipal control, but by working together, we can develop innovative ideas and advocate for effective solutions for the benefit of our community. You have my assurance that I will continue to work hard for continued improvements as your mayor on behalf of this community. And I would be remiss if I did not thank Christy Clark and the Minister of Highways, Mary Pollock, for committing to doing something about the Massey Tunnel. We have now finished the first phase of that uh, <laughs> research, looking at the needs. There were over 1,100 people that made comment on this really um, needed facility. We're going into phase two, and the provincial government are uh, actually, there's going to be a meeting here Saturday, 10 o'clock to one o'clock. If you wanna come down and be a part of it, you can go online, and the province is really interested in getting everyone's feedback as to the five options that they put forward. So they are moving forward with that and I am very much pleased to let you know uh, that it's the province that are, are really driving this issue. <coughs> and before we move to questions, if we have time for any, I'd like to thank the Delta Chamber of Commerce very much for inviting me here to speak once again and for their ongoing hard work in promoting businesses and advocating on behalf of them throughout our community and beyond. You are truly an integral part of Delta, and I thank you so much for being allowed to speak to you today. Thank you.